I'm going to take over. Okay, let me get my screen share up. This and go up here, and I think I'm ready. So, okay. Well, welcome back to our Ozarks History set of presentations. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, the first week we talked about uh, basically stereotyping, just exactly uh, who are the Ozarkers. And last week we talked about the water resources and how uh, really important they were to the development of the history of the Ozarks. Today we're going to look at the it. We're going to look at the land. And, uh, you know, I've had people ask me in the past, they say, why do you, why do you always talk about the geography of an area when you're Well, it's because number one, uh, the geography of the area almost always determines to some degree what happens. And number two, I just like talking about it because it shows God's majesty. I mean, it is just, it's, it's just on display. And um, boy, can you tell that in the Ozarks? There's just so much beautiful uh, landforms and water forms. So let's get into it a little bit. Uh, geology of the Ozarks. We're going to talk about the land and how it came to be like it is. It's a, it is a very unique landform in the world. Uh, there's only about five places in the world that are very similar to the land, the geology, the geologic formations of the Ozarks. Now, I've been starting out my presentations. Uh, do this would be to familiarize you with some people that maybe came from the Ozarks that you were unaware of, and some of them you will be aware of. Um, now, this is a really distinguished looking man here. You can tell it's, a, it's an older photograph, probably somewhere in the 1930s or 40s. He's got his English tweed jacket on, smoking his pipe, and you can tell he's a... Um, if you're wondering who he is, he is a man who became one of the preeminent astronomers in the world, a man by the name of Edwin Hubble. Now, you've probably heard the name, you probably heard it associated with the Hubble Space Telegram, uh, Telescope. He did not invent the Space Telescope. It was named after because of his uh, importance to the field of astronomy. Uh, basically, um, and I'm not an astronomer, and I don't know that much about astronomy. Basically, what he did was prove that the galaxy, the Milky Way that we are in, was just a small universe and again that that just goes to the display of god's handiwork uh he was able to prove and then you know uh reinforced by other astronomers that the universe is is almost infinite and expanding at the same means that god's not through with us yet uh and i believe that so let's kind of get an overview of the geoparks before we get into just exactly how it came to be. Uh, if you were to look at the Ozarks, and again, this is kind of the outline. Uh, remember, it's about the size of the state of Ohio when you look at it like this. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of things going on here. For instance, um, first thing we need to note is that we're on time, and you probably have heard a lot about the Ozark Mountains. There really aren't in Ozark Mountains. There are mountains in the Ozarks, uh, but not as many as you would think. True mountains in the Ozarks are the French Francis, St. Francis Mountains over here in the southeastern part of the Ozarks at the headwaters of the uh, Black River and the St. Francis River. Those are the only true mountains. Now, there are a group of uh, uplift down here uh, in northern Arkansas called the Boston Mountains, but they're not really mountains geologically. They're tall. They're about 2,500 feet tall, which is about 1,000 foot taller than the St. Francis Mountains, but they're really not mountains geologically. Uh, they were basically a result of, of erosion. Now, there are a set of mountains further south, which you can't see on here, called the Washita Mountains mountains down there but they're outside of the uh 
basic uh, formation of the Ozarks. The Ozarks kind of has a spine. It's kind of like this. You notice it says the Salem Plateau and the Springfield Plain. That's kind of a spine, because if you'll notice, the rivers to the south of that spine all the rivers to the north all flow north. That's uh, kind of like the continental divide of the, of the Ozarks. Um, that's also the location of the old Kickapoo, the Indian Trail. That's also the location of what became known as the Old Wire Road or the Telegraph Road. That's also the location of what Route 66 and is now Interstate 44. It kind of follows the spine of the Ozarks. So if you travel from St. Louis to Springfield down to, say, uh, Fayetteville or Old, you're going to travel along the spine of the Ozarks. Now, there are some uplifts within this um, area that we call the Ozarks. One of them is right in here. It's called the Salem Plateau or the Central. And it's an uplifted area, but it's basically flat fairly decent farmland. And then there's something over here called the Springfield Plain. That's where I live, right here. And the Springfield Plain is an uplift. You'll notice here uh, how the, the map kind of shows it's uplifted. And it's probably the best farmland in the Ozarks. And it comes down like this, uh, around the uh, Bentonville, Fayetteville, Rogers, uh, uh, corridor, kind of like this. And there's something called the White River Hills, which are actually actually lower than the Springfield area. Uh, if you're from around here, you know, the Springfield to Branson takes you about 45 minutes on a really nice four-lane highway. And you go up and down hills and valleys, but you're actually downhill to Branson. Most people don't realize this. You just don't get the sense of that. And then there's some other area of hills over here. We don't see them, but they're something called the Quarterway Hills, which we'll talk about next week. And up here, you got the Osage Gasconade Hills in this area up here. The overall kind of physiographic outlook of the Ozarks, that kind of gives you an idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out how all this happened because it is a really unique geologic place in the United States. Uh, situated on an old geologic structure known as a craton, C-R-A-T-O-N, which is the core basement continent. So if you were the, the basement rock, the rock that kind of North America sets on is called a craton. And we're set on And the craton is covered by plates, kind of like an armadillo. Uh, if you know what an armadillo, you know they got in its body. Those are called tectonic plates. Now, these tectonic plates, on occasion, shift like this or go up like this. And you see both those forces at work in the Ozarks. They'll be shifting and they'll go up. And the, the result is that, you know, together with forces uh, like rising seas and glaciers, you have developed a, a really unique logic area. Now, there are three basic types of rocks found in the world. There's igneous rocks. And those are basically volcanic rock in rhyolite and stuff like that. The only place you're going to find igneous rocks to any degree are over there in the St. Francis Mountains that I showed you originally over there in the southeastern part of the Ozarks. That's the only place because that's the only true mountains, the volcanic mountains. There's also metamorphic rocks which are rocks that are just within uh, this craton and which are basically formed by high pressures and high temperatures. There's very, very, very little metamorphic rock in the Ozarks. It just almost is one place 
that you can see it in abundance. And that's a place called Han State Park over near St. Genevieve, right at the very edge of the Ozarks. But that's, uh, they don't really play a major part in the Ozarks and the history of it. By far and away, the most common rock that you're going to, it's called sedimentary rocks. And these are rocks that were laid down as a result of deposits of shale and don't purely limestone. And these were left by seas. If you don't know, the Ozarks were covered by seas many, many times in the past. Some of those uh, coverings lasted eons. Some of them lasted only for thousands of years. And, uh, a great deal of falling and rising seas uh, covering the Ozarks. And each time that happens, it leaves sediment, sedimentary rocks. The result is you find a whole lot of shale and dolomite and particularly limestone in the Ozarks. This is what kind of is the key element in the geologic development of this Ozark uplift. It makes it one of the oldest and most unique regions in the United States. If you were to travel from east to west in the United States, you know that the first thing you're gonna find the east coast is the Appalachian Mountains, and they are true mountains. Uh, and they are taller than the Ozarks. There is a debate about whether or not the Ozarks or the Appalachians are older. Um, I've, I've read both cases where some people think the Appalachians, most people think the Appalachians are older than the Ozarks, but there are some that believe the Ozarks are older. If you leave kind of the flat farmland, particularly that area that was created by the glacial uh, formations, and you know, Appalachians, particularly in the northern part, Indiana and Ohio and uh, Illinois and Iowa, and you're going to just have flat land. There's not a whole lot of mountains and, and hills and valleys in this area. It's very flat. You see the agriculture. Down south of this glacier formation is where you find the Ozarks. And they were there. It's very, very old. In fact, the case, uh, there are some people that believe the original St. Francis Mountains are taller than the Himalaya Mountains. I don't know that I believe that. I've read that. Uh, that seemed awfully big to me. Uh, but the big mountain ranges in, in the world, these, the Himalayas, uh, the Andes, all these really big mountain ranges that you'll find throughout the world, they're really new. They've, they've only been around geologically a very short period of time. Places like the Ozarks and the Appalachians have been around forever. And not very tall is because they've been worn down by erosion. And as a result, you have what's known as uplift. So let's look at how all this was formed and the result of all this formation. Now, if you don't know, uh, the formation of the earth, we're going to do the earth science here, is formed in the basically four different areas, eras, pardon me. There's the Precambrian, which scientists tell us uh, lasted about 3 billion to about 550 million years ago. A long time, okay? That's what scientists tell us. Uh, it was during this period of time that you have a lot of formation of the earth through a volcanic origin, um, pressures from the up in the cent center of the earth, forcing its way up. And you have mountains being formed, particularly volcanic. And again, some of the oldest mountains in the United States, if not the oldest mountains in the United States are found in the Ozarks. And that's the St. Francis Mountains. All mountains, if you're speaking French. Uh, as you will find out, the Ozarks uh, have a lot of French place names, and we are notoriously bad in these places. Uh, they have taken on a whole new meaning in the Ozarks uh, as far as pronunciation. Uh, they're actually the St. Francois Mountains, but we call them the St. Francis Mountains. 
Um, and again, there are people who believe that St. Francis Mountains were as high as the Himalayas at their origin. I, I almost find that hard to believe. Who am I to argue with the, with the uh, experts? Uh, the highest elevations in Missouri are still found here. Uh, but, you know, that's not... Uh, it, I'll show you a picture here of the St. Francis Mountains in a few minutes. You're going to be really disappointed if you think that you're going to see majestic mountain peaks like uh, you see in the Rockies or even the Appalachians, you're going to be disappointed because they're not very big. And, they're, and that's because they've been eroded over all these eons and eons of years. Um, one of the best, the igneous rocks, these volcanic rocks, that were formed can be found in something called the Johnson's shut-ins on the St. Francis. Um, and you're going to find here, you're going to see evidences of these uh, igneous rocks because you're going to see evidences of something called rhyolite, which is basically nothing more than magma, lava. Um, the uniqueness of this is that some of these have left there with very unique colors. Uh, magma when we think of lava we think of black uh, they're not necessarily black in the ozarks in fact in the case there's some red rhyolite there's some green rhyolite there's some blue rhyolite i'm going to show you a picture of the same of the johnson shut-ins here in a minute and i'm going to show you a picture of, of white, blue magma it's really unusual um, another example of these igneous rocks that were formed in this volcanic period of the precambrian are something called and they're found at the top of the St. Francis Mountains. And they're just gigantic boulders, uh, which, you know, at the time people didn't understand exactly where they came from. Well, where they came from was that they were just basically blown up out of these old ancient volcanoes and then left on top of the mountain range. And as the mountain range was eroded, these tors, as they're called, these weathered boulders were left setting on top of the bedrock. And the result is that they, they just, you know, there's human people for years for, couldn't understand exactly what they were. The ancient Indians of the area used to worship these things. They thought they were gods. So unique. And I'll show you a picture of these. The biggest one is called Dumbo. He's 27 foot tall. 34 foot long, 17 foot wide, and weighs an estimated 680 tons. Solid rock. Uh, so here is some of the metamorphic rock that can be found. This is about the only place you're going to see metamorphic rock in the Ozarks. Is a place south of St. Louis uh, and a little bit east of St. Genevieve. Uh, it's very, very unusual to even see any metamorphic rock. This is the St. Francis Mountains. Now, I told you, you're going to be disappointed. They're beautiful. There's nothing, I mean, you know, they're not ugly mountains by any means at all, but they're sure not, uh, you know, the Rocky Mountains or anything, Alps or the Himalayas. They look almost more like hills. They're beautiful hills, but uh, they're so eroded over the past billions of years that they just have them. This is elephant rocks. This is a state park. I mean, you can see this is Dumbo, and you can see uh, you got some kids standing here by Dumbo. You can see they're just gigantic, and they're just, you know, uh, people for years could not figure out exactly how they got there because there was no way you were going to take them up there on top of the mountain and, and set them like that. There was absolutely no way. Uh, it would be very difficult to do today with all of our modern technology, let alone uh, thousands of years ago or millions of years ago. So uh, these are elephant rocks. This is just, to me, this is a really beautiful site. This is the Johnson shut-ins I was talking about. This is the blue magma called rhyolite. And you can look at it. Uh, it's just extremely unusual. This is, this is basically lava. And, you know, that was a, a uh, from the volcanic origin of the, uh, uh, you know, the igneous rocks. And you can see that it's very, very unusual. There's green rhyolite found there. There's elements of red rhyolite, but by far and away, the most common is the blue rhyolite. And it has to do with the minerals 
that was in the magma when it was uh, uh, forced up, but a very unusual set of circumstances. I thought I'd read you this. This is from uh, Henry Rose Schoolcraft. We've talked about him, and we're going to talk about him more um, as throughout the find out that he played a very instrumental part in the earliest expo uh, exploration of the Ozarks back in the early 1800s. In fact, he's the first man to actually explore it and write about it to any degree. Well, he went through Johnson shut-ins on his journey through the Ozarks. And this was his was something that you might be interested in hearing. Uh, this was written February 1st, 1819. Much had been told me of the Narrows. We now call that the Johnson shut-ins. It's a state park now where the river is compressed between hills of granite and the shaking of the earth. Uh, it's also the area that was affected by uh, earthquakes. And we're gonna talk about this. But, um, the worst, the biggest earthquake to ever hit the United States was right outside the uh, edges of the Ozarks and definitely affected the Ozarks. Earthquake of 1811, uh, just a few years before this. Here's the river, the St. Francis River, narrowed to half its width with, uh, with forces itself but ridges of red granite and brawling over its rugged bed, pitches at successive leaps, 20 or 30 feet the distance of half a mile. The ridges rise to a height of six or 700 feet and are capped with oak trees, except on the side facing the river where, uh, where the rock during the lapse of ages had fallen off. And the so accumulated as to give the ridges the appearance of two mighty and confused piles of granite stone. He's a little wordy. At the water's edge, there is a vein of micaceous iron ore, some blocks of greenstone porphyry. So he's talking about green porphyry here, or also seen in mineral ruins, radiated quartz, iron pyrites, and species of massive mountain iron ore are also the production of this region. This kind of earliest description of... Now, after the Precambrian era came the Paleozoic era. Now we're going to see kind of how the Ozarks used to be formed. Uh, the Paleozoic era extends about 550 to 245 million years ago, the scientists tell us. This was the period of time very layer of rock that we find throughout the Ozarks was laid. Uh, again, things like shale um, and clay, uh, <clears throat> clay burns up in the shale, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, there was also on top of the shale dolomite layers, very thick layers, sometimes 500 were left behind on top of the shale. And uh, there was some sand deposit that would retreat and the climatic changes produced conditions and left sandstone. So you're going to find sandstone in the Ozarks. Not as relevant, not as much as long and dolomite and shale, but you'll find it. And finally, the region in the Paleozoic era, uh, when it was finally covered by seas and was there for a long time, left a top layer of limestone. And that is the common rock found in the Ozarks. This is a great picture. This is shale. And you can see it's uh it's just basically uh you know just uh, you know pardon me this is dolomite I'm I'm getting messed up here this is dolomite this is shale up above it uh, and then you can see just I mean you can see it's just like somebody just took a level and leveled it off and put the dolomite on top of it uh, and this is a result of sedimentary layers left by the seas, these ancient seas that covered the Ozarks. Um, you can go out, the, uh, I can walk outside my door and walk anywhere to a creek bed. And there's a creek bed about 500 feet from here, uh, the Wilson's Creek bed. And I can look and I can find fossilized rocks full of seashells. And people are always amazed at that. When I taught this in high school, I used to do that very thing. I would walk outside the door and uh, you know, pick up a rock and bring it back into the classroom and pass it around. And the kids, you know, that you see these rocks, you, you don't see the forest for the trees. They see these rocks 
and they're just rocks. But when they really look at it, they realize they're full of sea fossils. They're all over the place. You know, uh, they're just by the millions in the Ozarks. And these are some of the what's called crinoids. By the way, that happens to be the state fossil. Some memes are, are Missouri. I know you're not interested in that. But there are just lots of seashells, sea fossils left because of these, uh, you know, leaving uh, deposits. So here's kind of how this all developed. You'll notice up here, outside of the Ozarks, uh, you have a whole lot of limestone. There's a lot of limestone throughout the northern part of the Ozarks and some uh, and some shale and a little bit of clay up through here. Not so much dolomite. Now, the limestone kind of wraps around through where I'm at. I'm at, I'm about right here on the map. And this is a lot of limestone through here. And also over around the edge of the eastern part of the Ozarks. This is dolomite. It's a little bit harder. Sometimes dolomite is talked about in terms of being flint rock or chert. Now, if you're from the Ozarks or you're familiar, you know that we have a whole lot of rock in the Ozarks on the surface. And those are called flint rock and it's actually chert. It's kind of an unusual thing. And this is basically all this. This is a lot of what you'll see on the surface of the Ozarks is dolomite. There is some sandstone, not as much. You'll notice the green is the sandstone. Diorite and rhyolite and granite are found only right here in the St. Francis Mountains. That's it. That's the metamorphic and the igneous rocks. And you're only going to find them right here uh, th because these are the only true mountains formed volcanically. And so by far and away, dolomite and limestone and a little bit of uh, and shale and a little bit of sandstone is by far and away the majority of the rocks that you're going to find throughout the Ozarks. So continuing on with development, you've got the rocks laid down now. Now from about 245 to about 66 million, uh, the seas covered the Ozarks and retreated many, many times. But for shorter periods of time, they would rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Whereas back in the Paleozoic era, the seas basically covered the Ozarks and just gradually uh, left and, and fell and leaving all this sedimentation. This time you're going to see a more back and forth uh, many, many different times. The result is that this is where you're going to see the erosion of these tall hills. This is when the erosion begins to take place. This is when you begin to see sinkholes formed. And sinkholes are vital to the development of the Ozarks, as you'll see here in a minute. It's also the period of time when you see some iron ore left. Uh, iron isn't real prevalent in the Ozarks, but it's, there are pockets of iron ore. Much more common and very valuable in the Ozarks is lead deposits. And uh, we'll talk about this. This is probably the most famous sinkhole present in the Ozarks today. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Johnny Morris, who started Bass Pro, but Johnny Morris is a billionaire, and he's from Springfield, and he's housed in Springfield. And Bass Pro in Springfield, the, the store is the mothership of all the other Bass Pro uh, and other countries. Uh, but Johnny Morris has built a huge resort area down south of Branson in a little called Ridgedale called uh, Big Cedar Lodge. And he's built several golf courses, the most famous ones that the, what's called the Top of the Rock. Building the Top of the Rock golf course. And you'll notice back up here in the fog, you'll notice some of the, the golf course. While he was building this thing, the earth fell in. This is taken from the balcony of the top of the rock resort. And uh, I mean, it fell in. What happened? And Johnny being Johnny, now, you know, when, uh, when this happens throughout most of the places, the people immediately just want to uh, pour rock into it, cement, close it up. 
because sinkholes are not necessarily good things. But Johnny is interested in everything of the Ozarks. So Johnny begins to ex excavate this thing. And he begins to excavate down. And today you can go to the top of the rock and you can see the results of this at this golf course. Uh, it's just a huge sinkhole. And uh, it's kind of a tourist attraction now. Um, I've often laughed, only a man like Johnny could do this. Uh, he's, a, he's kind of a unique character. Uh, this is much more common erosion that you're going to see as a result of all this uh, seas coming and going. This is called Lois erosion. And you're going to see that it's much more of a sandy type. And this is what you're going to see around river valleys and things like this. You're going to see uh, the uh, sides of the cliffs along the river valley and creek beds that are eroding. Uh, the Kenozoic era lasted from about 66 million years ago to present. This is, we're into Kenozoic today. This is when the Ozarks uplifted. Uh, up to this time, you had the St. Francis Mountains, and you had all this layer of limestone being deposited. But that was it. That was the, you know, the St. Francis Mountains were huge. But other than that, you didn't have much. Now you begin to have causes the plateau of the Ozarks. Those plateaus that I showed you early on when we started talking, these tectonic and these volcanic forces. It's also affected by the glaciers because about, you know, during this period of time, you had all the ice glaciers coming from the south and they just acted like a bulldozer, just shoveling everything ahead of it. And uh, if you know, if you go north of the Missouri River, you can go from the Missouri River, cutting across the central part of Missouri, clear up into Canada, and you won't hardly see a hill. It's just flat as a pancake. Iowa, uh, Minnesota, the Dakotas, uh, areas are basically just shoveled out by these glaciations, and they just flatten them out. Also, some of the best farmland. Uh, and as a result, some of this rubble that came ahead of the glaciers, guess where they ended up? In the Ozark. The southern edge of the glaciers extended as far south as the Missouri River, pushing a glaciated rubble southward. And this basic result of all of this in the Ozarks, this is the uplift. And again, you got the St. Francis Mountains, you got the uplifted Salem Plateau, which is pretty good farmland. You've got the Springfield Plain, which wraps around like this, or Springfield Plateau. And you've got what's called the Boston Mountains. But again, they're not really mountains. You know, these are the Washita's. They're actually mountains, you know, but these are not volcanic in origin. So they're not really mountains. They're just part of this uplift that had been eroded to the point that you have some really deep valleys. Uh, this is kind of a map of the glacier, and you can see the glacier, how it just basically just flattened all this land uh, north of the Missouri River, kind of a little bit south of the Missouri River right here. And this is not part of the Ozarks, by the way. So you can see all this is great farmland. You know, you get into Iowa and Illinois and Indiana and Ohio and uh, up into Minnesota and Wisconsin and the Dakotas great farmland up in these areas. So the result of all these tectonic shifts, panic things going on, all the rising and falling seas, all the deposition of rocks, you know, that I've just talked about, left in place something called karst. Karst is a really unique geologic structure. Now, there's different types of cars, and I'm not going to get into that, okay? But you need to know that basically karst is primarily found underground. There's very few times that you can see karst above the ground. Uh, but there are some places it's visible, and we'll talk about that. Uh, karst that's found in the Ozarks, the unique kind of karst that you're going to find in the Ozarks, 
can only be found in about five other places in the whole world. Southern France is one place. By the way, that is the place, if you associate winemaking in France, it's in the southern part of France. Guess what? Winemaking is a big deal in the Ozarks today. And that's because there's a whole lot of similarity on the types of, of land. Uh, there's a province in China called the Guangxi province, and it's very much like the Ozarks. The Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico is very much like the Ozarks. The Balkan Peninsula, uh, places where you have uh, the old countries of Albania and some of this, place, some of these Serbia, Bosnia, some of these areas over between Greece and Italy. Uh, that area is very much similar to the Ozarks and Northern Ireland, when you know it, because who makes up the primary old population of the Ozarks? People that came from Northern Ireland. That's because when they saw the Ozarks, they thought they were at home. I can, I can almost see my great grandpa, my great, great, great grandpa, John Stevenson, coming here in 1843 and probably rolled up on his wagon and looked out at that place over there around east and west of Nixon and probably thought, I'm home. This looks just like what I grew up with in Northern Ireland. And, you know, again, that's how all this plays into the development of the history of the Ozarks because this became an area that was primarily originally settled by what's known as Scots-Irish. So what is karst? I'm gonna show you what karst looks like. Uh, by the way, these are the Cliffs of Moher in Northern Ireland. Now, I know that doesn't look like the Ozarks because we don't have an ocean, but if you didn't see the ocean, you know, you would think you were kind of in the Ozarks. Uh, so, How's cars formed? Well, it's formed when all this water begins to drain the limestone and it starts a chemical process. Limestone is extremely soluble water, uh, rock, and it produces, and the water begins to drain down through the rock and begins to erode it through a chemical process. And it forms underground rivers and it forms caves and eventually some caves collapse forming sinkholes which serves as almost like bathtub drains for the water it just kind of basically the water just flows into these sinkholes in the ground well what happens to it eventually the water collects and rises through spring so you've got the water basically dissolving all this uh, limestone uh, going through sinkholes and things, uh, collapsing caves, forming underground rivers, and leaving basically from underground, bubbling up. Once it reaches a certain level, the water's got to go somewhere. It's going to force through the rock in the springs, forming all these rivers that we have in the Ozarks that we talked about last week. So if you look at karsh, rocky soil, and folks, have we got rocks in the Ozarks? I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a county right south of here called Stone County. And I used to tell my students, they ain't called Stone County for nothing. I mean, we just have, uh, we don't have the best farmland. Uh, caves, there's over 5,000 caves in the Ozarks. One of the nicknames of the Ozarks is the cave state. The longest cave is Crevice Cave over on the eastern part of the Ozarks. It's not very, you, you don't hear a lot about it because it's uh, basically underground. You have a lot of sinkholes and natural arches. You have underground rivers. You have springs. These are the five characteristics of the Ozarks karst. Rocky soil, caves, sinkholes and natural arches, underground rivers, and springs. Let me show you a picture of each one of these. These are all local pictures. I took almost all these pictures, except for one. This is what lays beneath the Ozarks. <laughs> um, I want you to try to farm that. I'm telling you, it's not easy to farm the Ozarks. 
you got to be really tough if you're going to farm the Ozarks because it's basically about an inch of soil and hundreds of feet of rock. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I used to have a friend that that had a farm here and he called it, he called his farm Moss and Rocks Farm. And I said, why do you call it that? And he said, because that's the only thing I can grow was moss and rocks, you know, and I believe it. This is a cave. This is an entrance to Smallin Cave uh, right near Ozark, Missouri, about 15 miles from here. Uh, one of the biggest entrances uh, to, the, to a cave in the Ozarks today. Uh, this is a description of uh, Schoolcraft's description of Smallin Cave, and I'm running out of time, so I don't have time to read this to you. But basically, he, uh, he described the Smallin Cave. This is a, a very famous sinkhole right here about two miles from here called Panther Cave Sinkhole. You can't see it very well, but it's about 50 foot down into the thing and there's a cave in there. And uh, I know very, I'm very familiar the Panther Cave Sinkhole uh, because of my own thing. This is the, what's called the Hooton Town Arch. It's about 15, 20 miles from here. And this was formed as a result of natural arch that was formed a result of this karst weathering. Uh, and so you're going to find these throughout the Ozarks. And this is an example of one of the underground rivers in these caves. This is at Onondaga Cave up uh, on the spine of the Ozarks. This is, I did not take this picture. This was taken. Uh, this is one of the many show caves in the Ozarks. And finally, you have Car Carroll Creek Spring. This is one of the thousands of springs that you'll find in the Ozarks. And uh, this thing just comes out from under a cliff of rock and the water just flows through this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, if you want to see karst at its best, there's a place up near a town called Camdenton, Missouri, right south of the Lake of the Ozarks, that has all the karst you would ever want to see. It's at Ha Ha Tonka State Park. And uh, it's just an absolutely beautiful place. Some people say that it's one of the best state parks in the United States. And every element of karst is on display. Uh, caves, sinkholes, springs, underground rivers, natural arches, you can see it all right here at Ha Ha Tonka State Park. On top of that, on top of the bluff, there, somebody built an old castle back in 1905, burned down in 1942, so all you have left is the shell of the park. And uh, I have a video here, but I'm running out of time. All right, thank you. It's um, it's Friday, so that means it's time for a one tank trip. And for those of you who love the great outdoors, traffic anchor Deja Jones takes us to Hahatanka State Park, showing us the rich history behind the beautiful area. On this edition of One Tank Trips, we visit Ha Ha Tonka State Park in Camden County, Missouri. Located 155 miles from Kansas City, this trip took us two hours and 34 minutes. The park was started here and the state acquired it in 1978. Originally, why the state was so interested is because of what we call karst topography, which is basically how uh, water reacts and moves through bedrock. Uh -huh. And that creates like uh, characteristics of karst topography would be springs, sinkholes, natural bridges, uh, caves, a lot of things that you'll find here at Ha Ha Tonka. And while the natural features are one of the main attractions, it's the castle that is most popular. It all happened before uh, the Lake of the Ozarks was even thought of. Uh -huh. um, a man by the name of Robert Snyder uh, came to the area. He fell in love with it, uh, primarily because below us here, below the castle, um, there was a spring-fed lake, which uh, below is Ha Ha Tonka Spring, Missouri's 12th largest spring. So Robert Robert Snyder came to the area, fell in love with it, and decided that he was going to purchase a large amount of land and build a European-style mansion here up on the hill. Uh, he started construction around 1905, and um, a year later was killed in a tragic automobile accident. His sons took over. Uh, it took quite a while for the construction. Um, all the sandstone, all the lumber, everything was taken right here on site uh, through like a kind of a a, a railroad system and uh, 
uh, mules pulling carts with the stone from the quarries out on the trail, which you can actually go see out on the quarry trail. It was used as more of a, just a retreat and vacation home than anything. It had 60 rooms. The family fell out of love with the area a little bit and eventually um, leased the castle out to Miss Josephine Ellis. Um, Miss Josephine Ellis turned it into kind of like a bed and breakfast resort. And then in 1942, it burned. Oh, no. October 20th, 1942. After learning about the castle, we went to another popular site in the park, the Natural Bridge. This natural bridge was created after a cave collapsed. It is said to have been a meeting place for tribal meetings and church revivals. Along with the history, there is plenty of wildlife to see as well. <laughs> You're here at the state park. Hahatanka's got the armadillo. Yeah terrible little creatures. Armadillos aren't good? What do they even do? Uh, they burrow and they breed and spread like crazy. They're not really native to the area. So what's there doing, Armadilla? Why are you there? That's weird. It's very close. I don't know where the fear comes from. Uh, birds? I forgot right. Yeah, birds. It's mainly an owl, but that thing even looks close enough. With over 17 miles of hiking trails, kayaking, boating, fishing, and camping options, you're bound to see some of the natural natural wildlife. Another guaranteed site, the water. And originally it, it led to a spring-fed lake here where the Lake of the Ozarks you know, eventually consumed it. We have a courtesy fishing dock. You can come down. I mean, you can jump. We don't have a designated beach, but you can swim here along the shoreline uh, as long as it's in the lake and just not in our spring. There is no shortage of beauty and activities here at Haha Tonka, and the best part is that it's free. The park is open every day from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. For One Tank Trips, Deja Jones, 41 Action News. Okay, so sorry, ran a little bit late, but I thought you'd like to see that. So next week, we're going to look at the geographic Ozarks. The Ozarks is actually nine different regions. A lot of people think the Ozarks is all the same. It's not. Uh, there's, it's not monolithic. Uh, there's so many different areas to see within the Ozarks. And then we're going to get in. After that, we're going to start talking about the Native American history of the Ozarks. I know uh, you're probably all anxious to hear about that because we're going to talk about the Trail of Tears with the uh, Cherokee Indians. We're going to talk about the Osage. Uh, the Delaware, some of these ancient tribes that, that lived in the Ozarks. So uh, I'm sorry I ran a little bit late today, but sometimes your plans get messed up. What is it? So, you know, so interesting. Oh, really? <laughs> that is great. Uh, okay. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, it was perfect. Thank you so much, Tony. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.